Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I am going to be showing you some cool tips and tricks um, that you can use in the Python programming language. Now, most of these tips are very specific to Python, and you probably don't even know they exist. Um, but they are definitely going to be able to save you a lot of time programming, and they make things a lot easier. So one of the great things about the Python language is it has a lot of built-in functions, methods, um, even modules that you can use to help you program. And it's built... Um, around all of the things that are wrong with other programming languages, essentially. Um, so a lot of these tricks that you have in here, you probably don't even know exist and can save you a ton of time and a ton of work. So go ahead and make sure you watch through the whole video as I'm going to be going through eight tricks. Um, in this one, I'm going to do a part two video later on. Um, but these tricks will save you a lot of time. And when I found out about them, uh, I was very excited um, because I no longer had to go through rigorous coding um, to perform somewhat simple tasks. So let's get ahead and get started. And this first one um, kind of solves a problem uh, that a lot of programs will run into if you're trying to well solve problems. So what you want to do is you want to have the index of a list and you also want to have the element in that list. So I'm just going to write a list here to start. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to do A, B, and C. Very simple for the purpose of the example. Now, what you would want to do essentially in a for loop is you'd want to have, well, the index of the item, but you also want to know what the item is. So what you typically would write is something like this. You'd say 4x in, um, and let's say, or actually we're going to start, we're just going to make another variable here. We're just going to say counter equals zero. We're going to say 4x in li. And then what you do is you'd increment counter plus equals one every time you run the for loop. Um, and I could be print, for example, like counter and x um, so that you could know what index your elements at um, and I'm just gonna move this actually below print because that doesn't make sense what element your uh, is like the index for your element and then you also want to know what the element is uh, so you, I'd print them here so I'm printing the counter and then I'm printing x so you can see if I run the program I get 0 a 1 b 2 C now that's great but you had to use this counter variable what Python does, it actually allows you to do this without using this counter variable and to shorten it up a little bit. So I'm going to show you how we do that here. So for, first of all, it goes for I and then item in. And now this is the keyword enumerate like that. OK, and then you just put your list name here. So in this case, li. And now what is going to happen is I is going to be assigned the index of your element. So in this case, when we're going through first, it's going to be assigned zero for a item is going to be assigned to a so now you have both of them with two separate variables and you didn't have to make this counter variable so i'll show you how it works now again we'll print i and then item like that see if we run the program we get the same thing and we just shortened up two lines we no longer need a counter variable and we no longer need to we'll define that we're incremented at top so that's really useful you're going to notice you use this a lot especially when you're trying to solve problems so that's a really cool one um, the next one I'm going to talk about, and um, a lot of you probably will know this, but this is really cool as well, especially if you're trying to print stuff to the console, is you can actually do something called string multiplication in Python. Now, it seems weird. In most cases, you can only add strings together called concatenation, um, but you can actually multiply them in Python. So I'll show you an example. I have a string like hello. If you wanted to print this string like four times to the screen, in other languages, what you do is you do something like this, plus s. Um, Oh, I have a capital S at the end there. Oops. So let's just print it four times and you get hello, 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 right? But what if you wanted to print this a hundred times? You don't want to constantly keep adding. Maybe you go through a for loop to add all the S's together. Anyways, in Python, it's a lot easier. All you have to do is S multiplied by and then an integer. In this case, I'm going to do four and I get hello, 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 hello. So that's really cool. You can multiply strings together uh, and that's another useful trick in Python. So the next one is a variable swap. In this one, you'll use a lot, especially if you solve, um, I don't know, if you solve a lot of problems, do like programming exercises and stuff, where you wanna change two variables around. So you wanna change, um, I don't know, you wanna change A to equal B and B to equal A. Now what you would typically have to do, and I'll show you here um, in any other programming language, is what you wanna do is you're gonna have to go temp, you're gonna have to make a temp variable, you're gonna say temp equals A, A equals B, and b equals a like that so now you've effectively changed a to be b and you've changed b oh so see this i've even made a mistake here this should not be a should be equals temp because after you change a now it's equal to b you still want the value of a so you're gonna have to call that temp variable here that we just created so b equals temp so i'm just gonna do this so that we can kind of see a little bit better okay so now 
what you want to do um, in Python is it actually makes it a lot easier. So what you can do is you can just go a comma b equals b comma a. Now this looks really weird and any of the programming languages probably give you an error, but this actually works fine. So you can say a equals b and b equals a. Now I'm just going to do it one more time because since we already changed b and a up there, they're going to be different. And then I, if I print to the screen, I'll just go a, you can see it's equal to two and I print b, it's equal to one. So we had two and one up here, um, but then by running this line, it actually changed them around. And they're just the reason I ran it twice in case you didn't understand is because I changed it up here. I just wanted to change it back so you could see from my original variables. Okay, next trick. Um, and this one is kind of a similar trick and it's, you can actually assign multiple variables to um, the value of a list. So for, if I'm just gonna make a new list, I'm just gonna say li equals, let's just go, yeah, a, b, and c, once again. Now I can do something like this, which looks really weird, but actually works fine, x, y, z equals li. Now, if I print x, I get a, print b, oh, b, sorry, print y, I get b, and I print z, I get c. So by just running these three variables here, it assigns to the same, uh, the ones corresponding in the list, which again, in any other programming language you think is like, what the heck, you can actually do that? But yes, that is something you can do. Now I'm just gonna restart this IDLE because I don't like working at the bottom of, it, bottom of it, I want it to be easier. You can see at the top. So the next trick that I have here, and this is one you might know about, um, and it's really useful if you're trying to use like someone else's modules or you wanna figure out what a function does without having to look it up. Um, and it's called the help function. Now it seems like, oh, why would I need to use this? Um, but it's actually extremely useful. So you can call this on any function. So for example, if I call help on the function len, then you see we get help on built-in function len in module built-ins. It says length, it gives you the parameters. So we need an object. And then it returns the number of items in a container. And that tells you what that does. So if I go help on function range, for example, then it goes through all the stuff that the range function does that you probably didn't even know. So it runs through the pretty much the doc string of this function um, and it tells you all the things that you can do with, um, well, with that function. So I'm just gonna open it again because I don't like working at the bottom. I'm sure there's a way to clear it, but I don't really know. So uh, we're just gonna do this for now. The next one um, is similar. And this one is actually called dir. Now what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna list all of the methods um, that you can use on a certain class. So for example, the class string has a ton of different methods like dot, um, I don't know, what's a string method? Dot strip, uh, something like that, right? Uh, dot upper, dot lower. So if you run this, it prints all of the different methods that exist on this class. So we have R strip, split, split lines. And then if you don't know what one of these does, you can just go ahead and call the help function on that. So you do, I think it's like, str and then dot and then whatever one you want so I think it's r split well that should give us something maybe let's see yeah so then it says help on the method um and it goes through and tells us exactly what r split does and that's really useful okay the next trick in python um and this is pretty well known but i just wanted to show it in case some of you guys didn't know it it's called list comprehension and it's a way to create a list within one line um without having to use a for loop so I'll show you what I mean here. So what you can actually do is you can do something like li, and that just stands for list, by the way. And I'm going to say is equal to x for x in range 10 if x modulus 2 equals equals 0. And now I'll break this down on what this actually does for us. Um, so it's going to say the list is equal to x, so an element x for x in range 10. So now what this is going to do is it's going to run x 10 times, so 0 to 9. And now I'm just saying, I'm only gonna add this element x if it's divisible by two. So if it's an even number pretty well. Um, and I'll just show you if I print li like this, you get zero, two, four, six, eight. And you can do this with multiple statements. You can change this around. So for example, I could say one for x in range 10. Now, if I just wanted to create a list of ones, so 10 ones, then that's what I'm doing here. I get one, 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 one and so on like that. So that just because I didn't say li equals, it just gave me that list. Um, you can see how that works and you can do multiple lists. You can, you can do a list inside of the list. So you could say for x in range, let's see, oops, messing up my typing here. And then we get five empty lists inside of another list. And that's really useful in Python because um, in other languages, if you want to create a list, you'd have to do something like for x in range 10, and then you'd have to do list dot append 
and so on. So this is going to crash just because you can't use lists like that. Um, but anyways, then you have to append to the list and that means you need at least three lines because you have to create the list up there. Whereas in Python, you can just do it in one um, and that saves a lot of time. So the last two that I'm going to get in here into here are um, just some functions that you can use on strings, which are really, really useful and they save a lot of effort. So I'm just going to copy a list that I've already have typed out here just to save us some time. Let me say hello, ABC, so on, just a bunch of random words and letters. And now there's a function called reversed in Python. Now what this allows us to do is pretty well just reverse the list. So I'm going to say reverse li and then if I, ah, it's because I didn't print it to the screen, my bad reversed li hmm interesting why this isn't working ah okay let's have to do this it's because it's an object print list reversed li and this should work there we go so now we get a list that's reversed uh and so is tech tim and so on like that what was happening here is i was literally just printing the actual function um i wasn't converting it into, into a list so yeah um, that's why that wasn't working. So anyways, reversed li, it reverses the list. Next one is going to be sorted. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm just going to say print sorted and I'll just put a list around it in case this gives, gives us an error again. And then I'm going to sort that list that I have up there. So I'm going to say sort li. And there we go. Now we get a sorted list based on alphabetical order. Now with this sorted function, you can actually use um, something called keys which are again really useful so i'm just gonna do the same thing here just print this again um and in this sorted function i'm just gonna do a comma and i'm gonna say key is equal to len now i'll give you a second to guess what this is gonna do just think about it if i add something called key equals len you might be kind of confused but think at what this might give us so i'm gonna run the function and you can see now it actually gives us a list not sorted alphabetically but sorted by length so we go shortest to longest. And again, say you wanted it to go longest to shortest, then you could um, just reverse this list using the reversed function and you would get that sorted list in the opposite order. Okay, so now the last one that I'm gonna show you um, is this cool thing that you can do in IDLE. And you might've seen me use it once. So pretty much when we're ever running something in the console, I wanna save some time. Um, we don't wanna keep using copy and paste. If you put your cursor on any line in here. So for example, I'm gonna go print uh, and just before, right after the arrows, and then you just click enter. It's actually gonna copy whatever was on that line. So after your cursor onto the next, uh, like the next running line in the uh, editor, which is really useful. Um, if you're trying to run the same thing over and over and test a program or just change like the argument, so you don't have to keep typing it or copying and pasting. And another thing that you can do is you could do something, um, and this is kind of goes with that, is if I just click underscore like this, uh, it's going to actually give me the last output uh, here. So let's do a better example. I do A equals F, and I just do A, it gives me F like that, right? Now, if I just type an underscore and hit enter, it gives me the last output that I got from my, uh, from my console here, from my, like, IDLE, whatever you're running. So again, if I do something like B equals four, and I just type B, and then I do an underscore, it's just gonna print simply what we just last had. Um, I don't know why that's useful, but it's something that's cool. Uh, I didn't say all these uh, tricks were super useful, um, but that's just another cool one that you can use like that. So anyways, that has been it for uh, part one of this tips and tricks video in Python. In the next one, I'm going to go over some more advanced tips and maybe some more useful tips. These ones are kind of like the generic ones, the cool ones people typically learn when they first start out in Python. The next ones, I'm going to be using collection types. Uh, and these ones are seriously going to save you a lot of time. So make sure you look out for that video um, if you're more advanced with Python and you already knew some of these tricks. Anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you again in another one. Oh, 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 oh,